Hello Bits Bros, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here with another video. So in this one I've converted up a warband for the Six of Sigma to use in Warcry and in a minute I will show you them on the desk and I'll talk through how I've converted them. Then afterwards I will show you how I paint them and by demonstrating on one of the miniatures. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get straight into it. Okay, so I'm going to run down the conversions and then we'll get them painted. So I'll probably just show you how I paint one of them because it'll be painted pretty similar. But for now, um, let's look at the conversions. Um, I'm going to start with this guy. This guy is just going to be a uh, just represent a normal free gold guardsman with a halberd. Um, but I didn't have any of them, and I want to convert up something different. So I've seen people use the corridor bodies, so that's what I've done. And yeah, I used some Nighthorn. Uh, I think from Grimgast Reapers. Use the arms there. And then just use like a chaos axe, that's why I've sort of um, put some stuff. There's some like Typhus Corrosion and whatnot on there. Just to sort of hide where the chaos symbol was. There's a little chaos knife on the end as well. And then the head, I believe, is from the Flagellants. Um, he's definitely probably the most sort of bland jitsu looking one from this warband. But hopefully the paint paint jobs will um, help with that. So yeah, this, is, this guy's going to be the leader. And I really like... Oh, focus. I really like using the swords from the Nighthorn as well. And then I've got him holding a little telescope thing. So, yeah, he uses the Free Guild General Body. And obviously the Nighthorn Hand. That, I think, was from... Uh, I think it's the Luminarch of Hiss. I think that might be one of the little... Accessories, what's in there? It's trimmed down from a much larger telescope, and there's an arm for a great sword. But I think that arm might be from uh, maybe a handgun or something like that. And I think the head. Oh, I should remember all this. And the head is from one of the free guild sets, possibly either a volley gun or the handgunners. I just want to figure something. Out. So, really happy with him. He's pretty cool. Now I've got a couple of uh, Blackguard, so I didn't have any bodies for these, so I improvised. This one uses Phoenix Guard body and a Dark Elf Corsair um, cloak and torso. And then the rest of the bits are from the Blackguard. Uh, this one, you might even recognise, is from a Lumineth Realm Lord Warden. Literally just given him... Chopped off the end of his pike, or a lot of it. Put a halberd on there. Give him a blackguard head. Um, I don't know what to do about the shield. I may file some of that down. But, yeah. Really like him. Next we've got a couple of um, Wildwood Rangers. And this one just has a witch's head. Literally nothing more than that. Um, but this one uses a couple of arms from the Lumineth Sentinel. So I've got a bird flying away. Um, I've got a sword in the scabbard. It is meant to have that weapon, but... Eh. It looks nice. Didn't have any more in him either, so... We like that. I've got a couple of handgunners. Um, so this uses a body from a volley gun. So I really like the bodies in that set. Uh, another, um, another flagellant's head. Mm, the gun's sort of aiming up. It's pretty much the only way I could get the handgunner's gun on there. Um, he's got a little vial thing there that... I don't know where that came from. It was pretty cool, little sort of bottle slash vial. Uh, great swords, sword and scabbard on his back. This one also uses the sword and scabbard. And uh, uh, uses great sword body and legs for this dude. And then I think one of the arms from Pistoliers and one's from the handgunners. And then the head is from one of them sets as well, I think it's from the handgunners. And then also put a little flagellant hourglass on him. And then last we we, we have a couple of um, great swords. So pretty much body, legs, and head all from the great swords. I really like these helmets. This one's even got a night haunt sword, which I really like. I said earlier, love them swords. Um, and then yeah, from also from the night haunt, they got a couple of bells sort of coming off them. Just to make them a little bit different. Um, I may, if I can find some other little accessories, I don't want to add a bit more to them, but I haven't really crossed my mind. But yeah, 
that's a little warband for Warcry. It works out just under a thousand points. Um, they might not do that well on battle, and um, we'll see that in the future, no doubt. Um, but yeah, that's the conversions and how they were done. So now I'm gonna show you on one of them how I sort of go about painting them in the sort of AOS 28 Blanjitsu theme. Okay, so for the painting, we'll focus on this guy, the leader, and um, I'll paint them all in pretty much the same way. So, hopefully you can see him alright, he has been primed black. I'm going to take some long beard grey, so I'm going to sort of dry brush this over the entire miniature. Help bring out where the detail is. And also, some areas are going to end up being white, so I think this will be a good sort of basis for that. And I want these to be sort of gritty. Obviously, we're going for this blend it to AOS 28. Um, sort of look so I had to do that all over help bring out the detail and yeah be a good base for some of the colours and just gradually sort of build it up on like the big flat areas on the cloak next up I'll take some ceramide white and I'm going to go over sort of the areas I want to be white and again it's just all dry brushing so I don't want this colour to be too solid and um, so I'm going for sort of like half white half like a dark green and um, I think I'll keep the green on the cloak well I'll do a little bit on the cloak just um sorry you know shot that just to build up a bit add a little tiny bit more of a highlight to it just get a bit more on the brush Now some areas are a little bit harder to reach, but we'll, we'll go in with a smaller brush on them later on. Right now I'm just going to focus on the clothes. So I think, yeah, this sleeve here will be more of a white. So I'll build up a couple of layers, dry brushing of that. Not so, we don't want a solid area, but I want it to be sort of lighter and some a bit darker on the others. And you sort of see we're sort of getting that. Now we're at sort of lighter here, sort of darker more underneath. I just want to build up just a little bit more on the top. So next up I'm going to paint the green areas and I'm going to try using some Creed camo for this. And it's just like a smaller brush actually. So I didn't want like a green that's really going to be too bright of course. And contrast paints are good good for this because you can always build them up to however light or how dark you want and I'll show them highlights through of course. And then do one of the legs as well. So yeah, I'm going for those quartered sort of white and green look. And then also want to do the cloak as well. You see where I've built up the white there, so just as long as you spread the contrast paint out quite evenly, you can always build another coat on if you so wish, but I'll see how it looks when it dries. But you can see already it gives us a really nice sort of muted colour, which I think will work very well for this type of style that I want to go for. Even though we've got a nice sort of colour in the green, it's still going to appear sort of fairly, fairly muted, which, yeah, should hopefully work quite well. So also I forgot to say in that last clip, um, something probably quite obvious is that I end up taking the hand off. Uh, it's just getting in the way of the torso. But yeah, um, you see I've done one of the feathers as well. So yeah, I'm just going to give these a little bit long longer to dry and then we'll work on like the hat and his boots. So Saigor Brown will be used for his hat and his boots. 
This is a nice dark brown. And yeah, I could have done this hat green. If I walked to have one of the feathers greens off, that'd be a bit too much. But I think it'll look okay. And uh, next up we'll do these little areas. So I'm going to take Agros Dunes for these. It's more of a little orangey, yellowy brown. So I just want one that looks different from the other areas. It worked really well for all this rope. He's got some on his back and just at the bottom of his armor there as well. So I quite like that color. So I added some uh, to his little telescope thing as well, and a little skull on his hat. So you can see he's come along quite nicely now. I'm going to take some uh, Griff Charge Up Grey, just for his beard. So... I like that it's got this little sort of um, bluey tint to it. Maybe not ultra realistic for a beard, but it's quite nice. So I'm going to take some lead belcher now from metallic areas. So we're moving on from contrast paints now and just going to paint the metallic areas. Like so. Um, that's obviously his armor um, as well. So I'll finish that off. So for the metallic areas, I've thinned down Black Templar and it works as a wash. You could just use non-oil non here. Um, but I don't have it at hand, so I'm just doing this. So yeah, feel free to use non-oil, but I thought I'd show you how contrast paints thin down can work very well as a little wash as well. And it does go nicely into all the recesses as well. Okay, so for the skin, I'm going to take some Bugman's Glow. Now you could still go with down the contrast route. For the skin areas, but I don't really. I've tried it before. I don't really like how it looks over a sort of a white dry brush. So you can certainly experiment, see what you think. But yeah, I'll go for a more sort of traditional look on the skin. So one thing I'm going to do to make the skin slightly different is add a tiny bit of Dragon of Nightshade to, to the Reutland Flesh Shade. Just take out some of that warmth. So obviously, um, you don't want there to be too much warmth on the skin. So I'm going to put two parts uh, flesh shade to one part nightshade. And yeah, it works really nice for a shade wash for the skin. So yeah, if you ever find your Reutland flesh shade just feels a bit too warm, but too maybe a bit too orange, then this colour really helps sort of counter that. So next up I'll add some Typhus Corrosion just on the metallic areas. Dirtying them up a little bit and I thin this right down so it's almost like another wash going on there but let us give a sort of, sort of brownie tint to it. And we do as much or as little as this as you want. A little bit on the armor as well. And then we'll just add a few little highlights and then and paint that lens and he'll be ready to go. So I'll add a little bit of iron hand steel just as a little highlight to these metal areas. Just run a little bit. So I'll just go down there like a little sort of shine going down and I'll do the same over here and then just add little bits. You can sort of see where the light's hitting it naturally anyway so I can just sort of follow that like so. And I'm going to paint just over the lens as well and I'll maybe add like a blue or something over that. See how that looks. But um, yeah next I'll highlight the skin. I'll just take a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone and I'll show you on the hand. Just running it 
along the fingers. Thin that out a little bit as well. You can see that wash has really sort of brought the colour quite down. Again, that sort of keeps with a sort of muted feel we're going for, but we do want a little bit of colour to the skin. We don't want them to look dead or anything like that, so I just add a little bit on his face too. And I just want to add a bit of Dawnstone just to his beard and hair, just to bring them out just a little bit more. And yeah, that's about it for highlights really. You can highlight the green and the white and the other areas if you so wish, but I don't want them to be too bright. And they, the contrasts do leave a little bit of a natural highlight anyway, so I'm quite happy with how they are looking. Um, so yeah, so it's a case of painting that lens. And yeah, it's about dark blue, so maybe... Uh, I think to buy dark must be quite nice. I don't want this to be like a super bright reflective lens either so yeah a little bit of give away darkness and then get a better tip on the brush it's not great but um oh no it's way too thin uh try that again shall we let's get a little bit more it's just a little bit too much water on the brush but um yeah take two eh? and yeah just go over that with like so and then once that's dry, I'll just find a slightly lighter colour, have a little bit sort of reflection. Again, you can see where sort of light hits it, so we get something there. But yeah, that works really well, sort of like that sort of greeny blue. It's quite nice. Um, I didn't want to have like another colour like red or something like that. Um, so I want this to be very sort of limited palette and muted. And I think it works well for the theme. And yeah, it's got a paint the skull on the base too, which... Um, I'll do off camera when I base for miniature. So I think a bit, little bit of Thousand Suns Blue to add a, a little highlight. It's still slightly wet, I think, which is what I want because I want to sort of just blend it in a little bit. Like so. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's a bit lighter up top there. Yeah, so I'll get him based and yeah, I'll show you the warband. And here we have a completed warband all together. So yeah, painted all in the exactly the same way as the miniature you've just seen. And I'm really happy with how they came out. The base is sort of pretty simple. Just used some of the Starland Mud uh, te technical texture paint. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.